it's the escapism, being out in the country, the challenge of it. When, when I was a kid, which was quite a long time ago now, carp, carp were amazingly hard to catch. You know, they were the uncatchable. It's not one reason, it's everything. I'm a great believer that it's, it's, it's either in your blood or it's not. And you know, a lot of the guys that have been around for a long time, you know, it's for a reason because it's truly in your blood. There's got to be something there for me. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a 50 pounder. It doesn't have to be a 40 pounder. But there's got to be something there of interest. Whether it be fish that are notoriously very riggy, whether it be a lake that's notoriously difficult, whether it's one particular carp that's really, really beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of things, but mainly there has to be something there to keep me interested. Some, some particular reason why that lake stands head and shoulders around you know, other lakes that might be around it. I have to tell you, and this is hand on art, I don't think I've ever fished a carp day ticket lake. I don't think I've ever done it. I fished day ticket sections of the river years ago on the Avon and that. I don't think I've ever fished somewhere for day ticket carp fish as it were. I can see they have a place. Um, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not saying they're bad, but they're not for me. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, well, to, to be honest, I've just said that some of them, and they're not bad. Some of them are bad in respect of, there's far too many fish in very small waters. Um, they're all starving hungry. They're all poor conditioned. They'll eat anything you throw at them, which makes, which makes it very easy to catch them. Um, which, as I was saying earlier, um, about carp being hard to catch, it, to me, it almost belittles the species. It doesn't make you a great angler, sitting there day in, day out, um, catching fish, but it can make you a consistent angler, without a doubt, especially these days where everyone knows pretty much the baits, the rigs, you know, etc, etc. Myself, time-wise, I do have a family and everything else that goes with it, the mortgage, job, etc, etc. I will try and do two nights a week, and that's, that's life permitting. If I'm on it, and I know what I've been trying to achieve over the season is coming into play, I'll do three nights a week, and I'll probably use up all my holiday as well, much to my family's annoyance. I was the first person to catch it from the mirror. The mere was never stocked, um, as in officially by the people who owned it at the time. So yeah, I was definitely the first person to catch it from the mere, I know that for a fact. How it got in there, depending on who you talk to, is, is guesswork. Uh, there's a few places it could have come from. Me and my friends, um, what we used to call a little band of anglers was the Diner Syndicate. And we lived in, generally in the area, it wasn't far down the road. We used to go past these lakes. And um, there was two lakes there. There was a bigger one and a smaller one. Well, the Mere, Cold Mere was a, was a smaller one, but I was interested in the bigger one. I knew there was a few fish in there. Didn't, didn't really know what, but I knew there was carp in there. Very few for the size of the place. But my mate Phil, um, it was June the 16th, there was, uh, there was a close season at the time. My mate Phil went on the uh, went on the Mere, and um, I went on what's High Lagoon next door. That the first night, Phil had a fish of I think it was 32, and he also had a 15 pound common as well, which uh, I didn't get to see. Uh, but Phil came and shouted across the lake to me and all that, and I thought he'd said from the distance he was, I thought he said 13 and 15, so I paid no attention, I sort of waved and off he went. Um, 
I went round there the next day, Phil was fishing up one end, um, I'd wrapped up, there was an horrible algae boom on the lake and it was all doom and gloom, it was like a second day, second day of the season and I felt like my world had ended. So I thought, I wrapped up, stashed my gear in the bushes and I thought I'd go around and see Phil but I walked up the other end. It was a nice day, I had nothing better to do, so I just went for a walk, um, took the long way round, walked down to this end, the, the wind was blowing in, just stood there, just having a smoke and just taking time. And I, just at the bank I saw a bit of a commotion in a weed bed, I couldn't, sort of from the bushes and now I couldn't see what it was. So I've ambled up there, and I'm just looking there, I've got my Polaroids on and that, and this, this fish just appeared, um, sort of slowly came in and I couldn't, couldn't make out in the ripple what it was to begin with, how big or whatever, but it sort of came up. I actually believe the fish was looking at me. I wasn't being particularly discreet, but it came in to sort of look at me as much as I was looking at, at it like, and uh, it just grew, and it grew, and it grew. I mean, I'd had fish to, uh, this would be, it's a long time ago, this would have been probably around 19, about 1986, 87, something like that. And I'd, I'd had fished up to upper 30s at the time, which was really big fish. There was, I think there was one or two 40 pounders in the country at the time, you know, it was unbelievable. And this fish just grew and grew and grew in front of my eyes. And, uh, and it was obviously really dark. And then it just turned and ambled away and I was left and I was like, oh my God, what I've just seen. I never got a, I never got a close, close look at it because of the ripple light, but it, it was big, you know, really, really big just bigger than anything I'd seen. You know, I, went, I walked up to Phil, and me and, uh, me and Phil were really good friends at the time. I mean, Phil was, at the time was, was probably the only person I used to really confide in about catches and that sort of thing at, at all. Um, very, very secretive at the time. Uh, even now, but back then, it was, you know, you wouldn't even tell people, give people the time of day. Um, but I said to Phil, I've just seen this great big black fish up there. I said, you know, really dark brown black fish up there. It's massive, absolutely massive. And uh, Phil said, no. I said, I said, to be honest with you, I was annoyed. I said, I said, there's a 40 pounder in here. I said, yeah, you, what, what do you tell me like? Why are you keeping your secrets all of a sudden sort of thing, you know? And Phil said, no, nah, no. Nah. He said, uh, you've seen the fish I've caught last night. And I was like, why? Well, he said, yeah, I've had a 30, a 32 and a 15. Anyway, back then, there was no, you didn't have digital cameras. If you wanted to see a photo of it, you had to take the film into the chemist and wait seven days and then you got on back like. Phil said, yeah, I've caught a 32 pound, it's really black. And the way I described the fish to him, he was convinced I'd caught the fish that um, he, I'd seen the fish that he'd caught. Um, you know, he's put it back and it swam up the other end to get as far away from Phil as possible. Anyway, I never, I was oh, scratching my head, no, that fish weren't 30 pounds, you know. I knew what a 30 pounder looked like, uh, you know, even back then. And it, it just bugged me, it bugged me, it bugged me. And then it was a, it was a year later, I went back and had a good look and uh, yeah, we, we found it and yeah, it was as big as we thought, as big as I thought anyway. I'm, I'm getting older now. I'm finding it harder and harder to find places that stimulate me. It's, a, it's My fishing has always been me against the fish. And as of course we all know, it's uh, you, you can't do that if, if you're rolling up and there's two swims left. Um, so yeah, very quiet waters. I could see me catching a lot less fish uh, in the future. They may not necessarily be huge, great lumps by UK standards now. Everyone's chasing 40s and 50s. It doesn't really bother me, to be honest. I've, I've, I've caught enough carp, I've caught enough big carp that I don't need to do that. As long as they're of interest to me, and as long as they're a little bit special, or the water's special, 
that, that's the main thing. I mean, most things in carp fishing, it's, it's not the fish, it's not the, the fish's weight. It's, it's where you catch it from and how you catch it. That's what gives you the satisfaction. If it's, you know, just because it's not gonna make front page of the angling papers, to be honest, that, that never bothers me. As it's just a personal self-satisfaction in what I've done at the time. So the future is, um, yeah, catching less fish probably, but just being special on a, on a personal level.